Hey guys, and welcome to the Fish Room. I'm Rachel O'Leary, and it's time for a species spotlight. I thought today that we would talk about the zebra apple snail, or Azaline spixie snail, a really unique little South American species that is one of my favorites, though they can be quite challenging to come by as they are banned from import and also interstate travel. So you have to source these guys from a local hobbyist to have them legally. Now you are allowed to own them and they're actually um, not uh, invasive in the United States. Uh, there's no known invasive populations. So they are one of those snails that are unfortunately just lumped into the banned from transport uh, laws by APHIS simply because of their species. Now they can hybridize with known problematic species like the giant ram's horse or Marissa snail, which is probably the reason that they are maintained on this list. Now these guys are a bit smaller than a lot of the other mystery snails, only getting to about an inch or an inch and a quarter, but similar to those guys, they have very comparable care, meaning harder water is definitely better to prevent erosion to their shell. They also need a diet that is rich with calcium and a temperature range from 72 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the warmer the water, the faster they grow, the faster they reproduce, and the shorter their lifespan. Generally speaking, they live about two years in that mid, low to mid-70s range. Uh, they're yellow with uh, dark brown spiral stripes. Their foot color or body color is yellow to brown base with dark spots. They have a short breathing siphon and relatively long antenna, and they lay their eggs underwater in gelatinous masses. Each of those masses has anywhere from 20 to 30 eggs, so they're not as prolific either as the mystery snails or the giant apple snails that are so invasive. Now, as mentioned, these guys come from Brazil, where they live in rivers, ditches, canals, lakes, pretty much anywhere there's water. Um, they move around a bit slower than a lot of the bigger snails, but one of the main useful factors of this snail is that they're known to eat hydra. So it means they can be a pretty good pairing in a shrimp tank, though I would like to mention um, shrimp in general can be really, really annoying to snails uh, as they'll groom them constantly, and this can impact their ability to reproduce and lay eggs. Now these are a sexually specific snail, meaning there is a male and a female, and they mate in the traditional fashion. Uh, females can store sperm and they'll continue to lay egg masses, whether fertile or infertile, as part of their normal reproductive health. One thing that I find particularly fascinating about these snails is that you can see the development of the baby snails with inside each of the individual uh, eggs that are laid and contained in that gelatinous mass. And it's really fun to be able to watch them develop and grow and then eventually hatch. Now the babies are super tiny, like grain of sand tiny. And I find that the survival rate is not super high unless you intervene and grow them out in a breeder box. In my aquarium, I just leave them where they lie, especially since this is not a snail that I can ship, so I don't need a huge yield of their young. All in all, I find them to be a super rewarding, super beautiful, super fascinating, really incredible species that is well worthwhile keeping if you can find some in your area. As far as compatibility with fish, they're well suited to keep with small peaceful species, but as with any apple snail, care should be taken to make sure that nothing can nothing that is prone to nipping their antenna, which do resemble worms a bit, would occur. But as always, I'd like to hear from you guys. What are your favorite snails? Let me know down in the comments and thanks as always for your continued support.